Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the penultimate session of today, day two of the E-Frames 2020. The session, we've got a stellar session coming up, the case study with the four the producers and the cast. Uh, to tell us more, I'd like to invite the moderator, Mr. Nair Bushin from Hollywood Reporter, to introduce the panel, and the next one hour is all yours, Mr. Bushin. Thank you. Uh, a warm welcome to everybody uh, on behalf of Frames. Uh, and uh, we look forward to a really interesting session. We have a fantastic lineup uh, of speakers. Uh, so let me introduce everybody. Uh, we have uh, Dana Stern. She's the managing director of Yes Studios, uh, which is the studio behind Forda. Uh, we have Leo Raz, who needs no introduction, but I'm still going to introduce him uh, because I think he's, he's known across the world right now. Uh, not just as the face, uh, the one of the main faces of Father, but also uh, one of the co-creators of Father, along with Avi uh, Isha, Isha, Isha Shroff, if I get the right yeah. one. Yes. yeah. And then we have Leticia Ido, uh, uh, one of the stars of Father, uh, who played the role of uh, Dr. Shireen uh, in the first and second season mm -hmm. of, of the show. So uh, a warm welcome to all of you. Uh, to start off, just to uh, give our viewers a little bit of an idea, not that anybody needs to know much about Fawda, because I'm sure people are pretty much aware of what the show is all about. But uh, Fawda is, I think, uh, uh, it's, 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 it's one of Yes Studios' uh, first drama series, if I'm not wrong, uh, Dana, right? And, um, uh, yeah, and well, it was definitely the first one that we distributed and yeah. got to a global audience. Yeah. It's actually the first um, Israeli series in the original version to have yeah. been picked up by a global platform and reaching audiences everywhere around it's, the world. So it became the most uh, watched uh, drama series in the history of Yes, and uh, the first Hebrew language show which was picked up by Netflix for worldwide distribution. Uh, the interesting thing is I think uh, that uh, it is getting the first international version, with the Indian version, uh, which is going to be produced by Plus Entertainment. Uh, so. I think everybody's going to be looking forward to that. So to start off the session, I think you guys must have been asked this a million times, but the obvious question to start is, how did the concept of father come about? I think Lior can take it, and then Dana can yeah. add it. Yeah, so first of all, um, hi, everyone. Um, namaste. <laughs> namaste. Um, <laughs> I was, um, when I was younger, um, I was in the army, the Israeli army. I used to serve in the undercover unit over there. And also my friend Avi, the co-creator of Fauda, he, we were serving together in the same unit as undercover. As you see in Fauda, this is what we did in the army. And, but just after a lot, many years, like uh, eight years ago, actually, uh, me and Avi met and we were in the West Bank in some some crazy thing that we'd done there. I cannot talk about it, but we were there. And Avi asked me very important question, the most important question that someone asked me, I think, in that period of time. He asked me if I have a dream. And I told him, yes, I have a dream. I wanted to write something about those undercover units, about the mental price that they are paying for their actions, and also about the Palestinian side, because in the Israeli culture, TV, we're not talking about the Palestinian. We don't see how they live there. We don't have their point of view. And it was very important for me and for Avi to write something uh, uh, about it with their point of view as well. And this is how it was born. Uh, we started to write. It was the first thing that we ever wrote. We are not screenwriter. screenwriter. We are. This is the first time that we wrote anything. Um, I have ADHD, so it's definitely the first time that I was writing something. Um, and um, actually, nobody wanted the show in Israel. We were, yeah, we were, um, you know, uh, we, we had our roadshow. We went to Keshet, it's the, it's, it's the biggest broadcaster in Israel. And they didn't want the show, they said no. And we went to Channel 10, they said no, we want to rush it. Everybody said no. And just, um, yes. In the end of the day, say yes. And even though it was very hard to sell it over there as well, because um, it was hard to adjust, you know, uh, this kind of series, because it's an uh, it's about, it's 
fifty percent of it is going to, it's in Arabic. Me and Avi were just two punks that never did anything in our life, Britain. So it's very hard to uh, to take this kind of show and and to make it. But they yes took it after all, and 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 uh, and from then it was a history. Uh, you know, Dana. For me, uh, the the interesting thing is that. Uh, there have been other shows uh, uh, out of Israel which have sort of dealt with this theme. Uh, of course, the most famous being uh, uh, Hatu film, which became uh, Homeland in the U.S. and Prisoner of War, and it also had an Indian adaptation here, uh, Bandi Yudke. So, how did you uh, plan uh, in terms of the positioning of Foda? Uh, you know, when you decided to go for it, uh, I know this is a bit of a marketing question, but uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's about concept selling. So, what went behind? Uh, the planning of Foda so that it had its own kind of distinct identity? Um, well, I think it, it goes first and foremost way before marketing. It goes for what the story is. And this is the real story. This is something that happened to both Avi and Lior. This is their passion. This is their therapy. This is their history. This is what they did, um, them and their friends. So they're writing from a very unique point of view, which is one that is actually, you know, in the trenches their experience is second to none. And as Leora said, you know, they're not screenwriters. They're first and foremost, you know, they experienced that world. First, screenwriting came later. So I think it was that authenticity and that passion and, and have something, and Leora can speak about this a little bit more later. You know, a lot of it is drawn from actual characters and experiences and things that happened to both of them and people that they know. So I think first and foremost, it was that, it was that authenticity and there was a lot of fear. I mean, it sounds, I mean, you know, success, everybody's looking back and say, oh, of course it was very obvious, but it certainly wasn't. And it was, it was one of those shows that was on our slate for a really long time. And then nobody really knew how it was going to turn out. And I remember when we saw the first assembly, kind of the first rough cut, we just went like, oh, wow, this could actually be good. By the way, it had a different name. Then right. on our slate, it was called Mistalvim for the longest time, which just means undercover. Mistalvim, it was called. Undercover. Oh. Undercover for oh. the longest, longest time. I don't even know who came up with Fauda, but I can tell you it was very scary for us. You did? There you go. Me and Avi, listen, because Fauda, it's uh, it's the na the name of Fauda. First of all, yes, it was very hard for yes because it was, uh, you know, it's an Arabic. Most, uh, yeah, like 50% of the show, it's in Arabic and, and, and we didn't know how to adjust it. And, and even the name Fauda, Fauda, the meaning of, of Fauda is chaos. chaos yeah. But in but Arabic, the, not in Hebrew. In Arabic, in Arabic, yeah. Nobody knew the word Fauda before the show in Israel. And, and it's, but there is a double meaning for that word because this, this Fauda in the, in, the, in the end of the 80s, in the beginning of the 90s, there were the big riots of, in, in the Palestinians. Uh, it was called the Intifada, the first Intifada, and this was the word that they used to describe the way that they are living uh, in that period of time. It was very chaotic for them, but in the uh, in the in the Israeli side, in the undercover side, we used this word as a code for the rescuer. If someone were uh, the, the the Palestinian understood that we are Israelis and we got discovered. So this is the code in the, in the radio for the rescuer to come. So we said, we have Fauda, and this was the code. So there is the double meaning. And I remember the people from Yes, they didn't know how to pronounce it well. You know, they were, they were asking, well, what about the script of Peoda? So they call it Peoda in the beginning. So they didn't know how to pronounce it. But now it's such a common word in Israel. You can find it everywhere. Everybody talks with and they say Fauda, and they mean it chaos. Um, I think the whole world has got the pronunciation right because of the show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, in terms of casting, uh, I think it's very interesting how the show has been cast. And that brings me to Leticia. Uh, your character of Dr. Shireen uh, was really very interesting. And uh, I think that the character draws on your own real life background uh, of uh, since you're French Lebanese. And uh, Shireen's character also has that sort of mixed uh, uh, sort of background. So what drew you to portray Shireen? How, how, how did you sort of, uh, you know, uh, become involved with Father and how did you prepare for the character of Shireen? 
you need to start. Are, yeah, your mic. Your, your microphone. Is yeah, on. sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. So it was very interesting because when I was first cast, uh, the first part of the audition, uh, and then they told me we're interested for you in, for this part. And then I said, uh, can I talk to Lior? <laughs> and we had this call from LA. I was in LA by then. And um, I asked him, I asked him, many things I don't know how many questions I had but I had a lot of questions because I wanted to be sure that the character could bring some hope and be maybe a link between the two parts uh, the, the two sides of, uh, of the show Israeli and Palestinians and then we came up with I said because I'm Lebanese French and Lebanese why wouldn't she um, be, be half Palestinian and, and half French and so we liked it, and and that I think brought a lot of things to to Shirin because she's able to have more empathy for both sides because she's out of the conflict. She has yes. one, at least she has one uh, one part of her is out of the conflict. So this was really interesting for me, and I really wanted her to be this link and to bring uh, hope and love, if it's possible in this kind of crazy situations so yeah uh, this was really uh, strong for me to first I have to say that uh, I was so, so surprised that Leo and the team and everybody was they were so open-minded and 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 happy to receive ideas and to even um, build a character together and I think that's the first time ever that I meet a team that is so uh, open-minded and so and so like them <laughs> I believe uh, the other big challenge for you Leticia was that you had to learn Arabic because uh, I don't think uh, I think you said in one of your earlier interviews that uh, uh, you're not too conversant in Arabic so you had to learn Arabic for the for the for the character well I'm used to play in languages that I don't speak uh, this one I heard I heard Lebanese when I was uh, young, but I don't speak. I, I just know how to say I'm 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 hungry. I uh, I'm tired, and I understand a few things. I think Lior Lior speaks way better than I speak Arabic, but it's okay. Well, I think we did the the same thing. We were learning phonetically. Someone just recorded uh, the lines, and then it was hours and hours and weeks and months of work. And what I really like uh, when I watch the show and I watch our scenes between Lior and, and be between Dawn and Shirin is that I know that he, he's not, I, I'm not, I'm talking about me, but I think it's the same. We're not totally, totally sure about every word that the other one is saying because we learned our lines. So I think it gives a lot of intensity to the show because we are, you know, like, the eye contact is very strong and the connection is very strong. And it was and really... Guy, I, thought it, I thought it's because we had a connection, not even because of the plans. We have a connection. Yeah. <laughs> the whole world felt it. I felt it. <laughs> yeah, I think the whole world felt it. Yeah. <laughs> now, Lior, I think, again, you've been asked this a million times. I'm going to ask it again. How much of Doron Cavillo is Lior Raz? Um... Mm. It's 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 a tricky question because I think there is a lot. I, I'm when, I, when my method when I'm acting, I'm 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 trying to put myself in the situation that the character that I that I have is in. So I'm trying to bring myself to the character, and but a lot of Doron is based on my experience in life. I used to do those kind of things when I was younger, but I think. Doron is much, you know, he, he, he can burn everything. He can bring, burn all the bridges behind him. And I don't do that. Uh, you know, I'm much more responsible person in life. And I think I'm much more, um, I have so many things to lose and I don't want to lose them. So I'm, I'm not acting like him. Um, but when I was younger, I was much, you know, it, it, we were quite similar, but not now, not now. I'm, I'm, I'm much more settled down now. Because I tell you what, uh, uh, I think it seems that the lines are blurred between reality and fiction as far as this show is concerned. Not just in your character, but also in the plot points and so on. So I think what I'm really asking is that when you and Avi were planning the show, uh, 
at that stage, at the planning stage, did you have any idea that how this show would contribute to the overall discussion of the Israeli of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict? And that's the first part of the question. And the second part is that uh, uh, what kind of feedback have you been receiving over the over the first two uh, over the uh, three seasons in terms of how the show has contributed to this very important discussion about the conflict? Yeah. So first of all, when we wrote the show, we didn't we thought that nobody will watch it. Just my parents and Avi's parents. That's it. And I would have watched it too. <laughs> yeah. Really, we, we didn't think that it's going to be such a big thing. Um, it, was, it caught us by surprise. Um, what we tried to do, we didn't try to be uh, ambassadors of anything, you know. We just tried to write a good story and a good television. We tried to portray the other side at the same way as that we can. Um, um, as um, you know, just in very in very kind way, and and for me as an actor, I wanna I wanna I, I remember that uh, we were sitting in the writers' room, and I said, I want to be able and want to play any any role in this show. I want and and I don't want to be I, and because of that, I don't think that we have flat characters in the show. You know, the bad guys. You don't think if if, if sometimes they're not the bad guys, and the good guys are sometimes the bad guys. So everybody's got everything is got mixed. And I think this is the magic of the show. And, and you ask how it got received. Uh, uh, so most of the, of, the, of the people that I know and, and approaching to me from the Arab side, really, and from the Israeli side, there it's, 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 it's quite crazy because I, I know right-wing Israelis who, ca- who comes to me and telling me, listen, this is the first time that I'm feeling empathy to the other side, to the, to the Palestinian side. And you know our characters, the terrorists, became became like a sex symbol in Israel for the Jewish Israeli women, and and the opposite as well. <laughs> but I won't expand it. I will. But <laughs> and and but but the other side. I used to be now in in for two months. I was shooting in a, a movie in Abu Dhabi, and I lived there for two months. And every night. I was finding myself sitting with people that I never imagined that I would sit with, Syri- from Syria, from Lebanon, from uh, from Kuwait, from Saudi Arabia, from Iran, and we were sitting together. And just because of that show, I think we became a good friends. And this is the first time that they said that this, they feel empathy for the Israeli side because sometimes we are as when you are a kid, you get you know you got your education from the from the from the government. And sometimes the education that you get, it's saying that the other side is such a bad g- people and you don't have, you, you don't understand, you don't understand it. For, but now they see it through the show that we are real. We all real people doing mistakes, having love affairs, having kids, having, having you know, and, and sometimes it, it makes people talk to each other and speak to each other. And, you know, it was in the third season was the first I don't know if you know that Leticia, but it was number one on Lebanon, um, uh, in, in, in number three in uh, um, in the UAE. Uh, I in, heard in, and I received messages from Lebanon. Yeah, it was crazy. I'm getting messages from Lebanon every day now. Every day. It's crazy. It is crazy, and and it's it's beautiful. And this is we didn't meant to be ambassadors for peace through a a, a show of a, about war, but you know it's <laughs> it's kind of a paradox. But yeah. this is what what happened, and also I think because we honored the Arabic language, we really love this language. We really love it. I think the other side see it, but I can tell you that there is some people from the Palestinian side who don't like the show. Not everybody loves it, and I think it's uh, and it's okay because I'm Israeli and I cannot write as Palestinian. I can write as an Israeli who's trying to portray the other side in a different way. But um, so sometimes there are there are people from the Palestinian side who don't like the show, and it's okay, you know. It's I can understand it. Leticia, okay, don't talk about it. Yeah, uh, actually, my my question to Leticia is also like an extension of what you're saying because the relationship between Doron and Shireen is very very interesting because uh, you know it suddenly takes the story to a completely different angle because you know all the while you're introduced to this very macho world of guns and everything, and suddenly there's love in and 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 love between so-called enemies in that sense. So, Leticia, what was your take 
uh, about the relationship between Doron and, and Shireen. Uh, that's my first question. And secondly, what kind of feedback did you receive specifically about how this relationship was portrayed? Um, well, about the first question, is it's more a question that would go to the script writers because I'm, you know, I'm just acting what is written. So <laughs> I was quite happy about what was written. Um, but I think what's interesting with her is that things are coming to her, to her life without her being okay or not, you know, she's, <laughs> things are coming and good things are coming and then really bad things are coming and she has to, to just to deal with it. And, um, but the, the feedbacks that I, that I got from everywhere around the world and India is one of in the countries that, are, that is the most active and, and really? that show love to us. So it's really, so thank you to everybody's watching, who's watching. And um, about our relationship, I think I heard personally, like uh, Leo, I received messages that I you know I, I screen captured those messages because I'm so, I feel so emotional every time I read those kind of things. Uh, people say to me that because of the possibility of love between us, they understood that the other one, the enemy, is maybe better than the dog. They, you know, they're, they've been taught to, I mean, to call the other one like, no, it's just a dog. Just don't care about it. And suddenly they say, no, I think it's more like a friend or a brother. And for the first time of my life, I'm learning Arabic, for instance. I got this one for for from an Israeli person and, and a Jewish Israeli. And then from the other side, I was surprised from um, Arabic countries saying, but we recognize ourselves in the characters. So we are able to, you know, overcome the hate that we naturally have because of the geopolitical situation. And I think this is magical because it's not a um, documentary. We know it's a fiction. We know, you know, we're portraying char fictional characters and, and I think this is why it's not exactly the reality. That's, there is, you know, a way, a little, something opens up in people's mind and say, wow, that's possible. Dana, uh, my question to you is because uh, Father became a, a global sensation once it went on Netflix and obviously it was huge in Israel before that. And now it's getting an Indian adap adaptation. So first of all, uh, how, do you see this, how do you see it translating uh, in the context of the India-Pakistan situation, and uh, what else can you share us uh, share with us about the Indian uh, remake? Um, well, the Indian remake is being uh, produced by Applause Entertainment and Mr. Samia Lahiel, and we've had a very good relationship with them. They've just uh, produced another one of our formats called Your Honor, which premiered on Sony Live uh, just uh, about three weeks ago, and I understand it's doing really, really well. So we have a lot of trust in them. And for Fauda, we're very careful about choosing partners to adapt. And this is true for the Indian version, and it's true for everywhere else across the world. And people have come to us wanting to take that brand and you know, localize whatever their conflict is. And sometimes it makes sense, and a lot of times it doesn't. But I think in the sense of India, um, first of all, they've done a wonderful job in researching the world of the conflict. And in this case, it's going to be set uh, on, the country, on the Indian Kashmiri border. And um, they've done a wonderful job kind of figuring out what the conflicts are, is, what, who the characters are gonna be, and how to preserve a very, very delicate balance between the two sides, which is key to what Fauda is. We've been pitched um, very, a lot of versions of Fauda from many, many countries. And one of the hardest things we always find is for people, you know, the ones that come to us is obviously one country, you know, a producer or a channel to see the other side in a similar light. And a lot of the pitches we get, they refer to the other side as, you know, the terrorists, the bad guys. This is not Fauda, right? And, and that's the, the number one key to doing a successful adaptation is realizing the other side has, you know, a claim, a history, a struggle, people, families, relationships, and everything that makes Fauda unique. And that balance is key. And I think for the Indian um, version, which is coming up and hopefully, obviously, COVID-19 has delayed this production and many others everywhere, everywhere across the world. Uh, but the idea is still for applause to go into production at the 
at the end of this year. Um, they're already in pre-production, they're doing casting, they're going through the drafts of the script. There's a lot of people working on it. There's journalists, there's language specialists. And I think it's key to them to get it extremely accurate and very, very right. Because unlike Avi and Lior who lived through this in their own experience, they their own you know, consultants, in this case, there really is a need to find an authentic uh, representation of everything. And it'll be um, directed by uh, Sudil Mishra. I hope I'm pronouncing it right, uh, who just did Hostages and a whole host of other very famous films. So I think it's, it's going to be good. I mean, we have a lot of faith in this adaptation. And we know, as Letitia said, and I know Lior can vouch for this as well, we, we know and we feel the love in India uh, for Fauda as it is. And I think that's just going to grow with a local version. I, I, uh, we, we really feel excitement coming. Yeah. Lior, uh, what would... Uh, what what kind of advice would you give the Indian producers of, uh, of, of the Father Indian remake? That's first. And what, what, what would you like to say to the Indian actor who's going to play the Doron character? Whoa. Um, to the producers, I don't know what the budget, Dana. I don't know what, they, what the budget that they have, so I cannot give them any advice. But just, uh, um, just to, to have when, they're, when they are writing it and they are portraying the other side they, i just want them to be when they're writing the, the the other side they should write it with a lot of compassion and 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 to feel and to understand um the other side and themselves um in a way that ve and, and very realistic because what we're trying to do and 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 avi and i we wanted to be as realistic as we can of course it's a tv show it's a drama. It's a, it's a, a lot of action, but we want it to be as 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 real as as, as we can. We, um, you know, the people that we are, we, did, we all the team. We were sh we were all together in a camp, um, training as a military uh, um, uh, team. So and we know how to shoot and we know how to fight and everything's supposed to be very very realistic. And when you talk about the other side as well, what uh, how they talk how they look, what they're doing, how they're acting. It's supposed to be very, very uh, precise. This is for the producers. For the actor, um, just try to be yourself and be kind to this character. That's it. I think he needs to learn, learn Krav Maga, right? Um, he, needs, he needs to know how to fight, yeah. And, and, and just be careful not to injure it through the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be very interesting. Uh, Leticia, my question to you is that, you know, Fauda is set in a very male-dominated world. So what is your view on how Fauda portrays its female characters? You know, that's the first part. And secondly, what advice would you have to give to the uh, female characters for the Indian show? I mean, what would you like to see in the Indian version when it comes to the women? Um, I think women in Fauda are the ones who are bringing emotion, for sure. Uh, the mothers, the, the wives, uh, I think they are very strong all the time. So also it's a gift that the script writers and the creator, creators of the show um, made to women in general. Because, uh, for instance, for Shirin, I, I knew that, I learned that, way after we shot, but uh, uh, she was not supposed to be a doctor and to have this position. And then I understood later that uh, Leora Kamenitsky, I think, fought for you know, her to have a social position that is high because those, these, these women, those women, ex wait, those women exist in, 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 in these societies. Uh, in this region of the world and not depending it could be like in the Arab society or the Israeli society the Jewish Israeli society these strong women they are there I met them <laughs> and women actually in this part of the world in my opinion are very strong are very powerful and they they take some space in in families in in everything in society so I think it was really um, interesting and right and correct to give uh, women characters so much space 
and and yes they are bringing the emotion they are um tempering uh you know the craziness they are asking at some point i remember to find other ways than revenge you know there is a scene that i really love um where this happens and there it's a mother and she so so i think for the the person who will um play Shirin. Um, it's funny because I've been asked recently to join uh, an agency in India because they say <laughs> they say I look like and I forgot her name. I look like an Indian um, actress, an old like in from the ancient times. So I was like, okay, no problem. I will <laughs> I will play myself the Indian Shirin. But no, um, I just think that she has to really keep in mind that her heart is broken in two parts and each part of her heart goes to one side of the conflict. That's the main thing. And that she can, she's able to understand both of them because both sides are humans. And that's it. That's the main thing. You know, uh, everybody wants to know about season four of uh, Falda. So I think I'll start with you, Leticia. I know is there a this is a this is a fanboy talking? Is there a chance? Am to I have, coming back? <laughs> no, 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 no. I have an idea. I have an idea. Is there a chance to have Shireen's twin sister in season four? <laughs> you don't. You can't imagine how many scripts, ideas I received, and I've been asked to send to Lior. I never did, right? Well, I'm doing so this many. Lior right now. It's in public. And you know, good ones and actually really good ideas that are still believable after one season without her. It's funny. But you know, so we life bring us to that. new life bring us to new horizons as well. So, so Leo, what can you share about season four? Um, actually, nothing. <laughs> That's it. So we can end it. <laughs> Question know, ended. It, it <laughs> there will be a season four. How's that? It's going to be there season four. Right, right now, it's going to be crazy as well and dark as well and. Um, we'll try to be to to do to make a good show. That's it. This is what you're trying to do, and I can tell you about everything. But then I have to kill you all, so I don't want to. People won't be surprised if I get killed by Doron Tavilio. <laughs> There's no way I can win against Doron. <laughs> anyway, uh, I think we can uh, take some questions. We're getting some questions, and uh, uh, somebody wants to know that uh, this is for for Lior that. Uh, you know, everyone can do a great show based on their own lives. Uh, Leo, do you think you're ready to do more now that Father has been such a huge success? Uh, and secondly, would you like to, uh, like to be an actor or a writer? First of all, I'm, I'm an, I'm, I will start with the second question. I'm an actor and I'm a writer as well. Um, I'm now, you know, I did a movie called Six Underground of Michael Bay with Ryan Reynolds. It's, I did a awesome. movie with uh, um, uh, Sir Ben Kingsley called Operation Finale for MGM. Uh, it's on Netflix as well. So I'm doing, and, I'm, and I was shooting now a new TV show that uh, for Netflix as well, American Israeli TV show, but this is me and Avi wrote it, but it's created just for Netflix. Um, we were shooting it in New York. So I'm, I la I'm an actor and I'm a creator and it's, it's, it's both together. I cannot think of myself doing just one thing. Um, and the first question was about what you know, was doing, a show, uh, doing a show based on your own lives. So well, do you think uh, you can do more or something like that, which is really based on your own life? Or does Fauda cover everything for you? <laughs> I think Fauda was, I was in the army for three years. So I have a lot of experience in life. So probably I can write more things about my, my experience in life. But, you know, as a creator, everything that you do in life inspires you as a writer. So it could be a dream, it could be just a one meeting with one, one person, it could be a whole a whole life situation, Or, but everything that you have can inspire you to write something. So it's not just about all your life. And, and Lior's led a very interesting life after the army too. I mean, he was a bodyguard. You know, there's a lot of story there. Bye bye. <laughs> Since uh, we have seen a lot of Israeli uh, shows being uh, made in India, 
uh, Rajiv wants to know uh, via live chat that is there anything out of India that maybe Dana would like to do and you know do some Israeli take I on that? Would, or I, would, I, would, I, would, I would love to come to India and to into Bollywood and to and to be in a movie in Bollywood and to and to feel the atmosphere of, of Bollywood movie industry. This is one of the things that I would love to do. Maybe me and Shireen. Maybe oh, me yeah, and Latisha. Me too. I was about to say, I'm, I'm dreaming of that now. Have you seen yeah. Indian films, uh, Letitia? Uh, have you seen any kind of Indian... Uh, yeah, films? yeah, I'm not able to... Yes, because I have Indian friends, actually, and they are, one of them is an actor. And, uh, and his wife is French, so we are we connected. And they are teaching me Indian uh, culture, I mean, in terms of cinema, because it's so wide. And um, yes, because I, they know I've been approached by some agencies and I've, I've done some lives already with India. And uh, so it's, you know, maybe it's a dream coming true. Maybe... Maybe those agencies will find me some work. And, and Actually, I saw, I saw you in a couple of music videos. I was doing some research for this thing and I saw a couple of music videos of you. So if you're in music, that's my work. you're singing and uh, so yeah. you're interested in music. So you're right. For yeah, that's my, that's my video clip of my first ever song. And it's, it's, it's funny. I directed it and uh, I'm starting to do my own things now. And, uh, and it's, um, yeah, I think we are, we, we are not, like Leo said, we are not just one thing. And we are able to do many things. And life is really short. So I'm planning to do many things. And, and Bollywood is part of them. <laughs> Dana, uh, my, uh, you know, the, the, there's one interesting thing about Falda is that when it became a global phenomenon, I know, again, at many industry conferences, you must have been asked, that, did you expect it to be global and all that? So obviously, uh, did you expect it to be global? That's one. And number two, when you saw the feedback across the world and uh, how the uh, viewers were responding and even the industry and even the general uh, public, the media, critics, uh, basically, how did you deal uh, with the, the various issues about the show when it came to seeing its impact worldwide, especially the political sensitivity? I know every country must, must have had a different or every territory must have had a different sort of feedback to you. But generally, what can you share about how you handled the, you know, the, the way it kind of exploded worldwide? Well, um, back, you know, Fauda hit Netflix back in 2016. Global wasn't, global television wasn't a thing uh, before that. Netflix um, earlier that year actually launched their global service up until, I, I believe, January 2016. There were a North American um, UK and maybe you know a country here or there, and the yeah, whole concept, and, and the whole concept of having a service that was going to be seen simultaneously, you know, in 190 countries, and, um, you know, localized and marketed for that region, subtitled or dubbed and accessible at the same time. I mean, that was that was a first. Um, this was one of the very first foreign language shows. To be able to do that and to actually become a global hit now it seems you know there's there's so many of these there's numerous platforms um everybody's producing a lot there's language and, and great content coming out of everywhere india has produced some global hits as well you know stories that are local but have reached audiences throughout the world so you can never expect that and certainly when we you know produced the show it aired in israel in 2015 never in a million years that something like this even seem possible. Um, and then, so you can never expect that. And I think you'd be wrong. And this is, you know, to any producers and industry professionals out there, you'd be wrong to try because what is a global show and what is a global, you know, um, success? You can only do the best that you can do for the country and the, the national and the culture that you know, and you can write what you know in the best way possible, make the best show you can, and then use the amazing technology and the platforms that exist today to get that to audiences everywhere. That's what people are going to relate to. They're going to relate to, you know, passionate storytelling done well, no matter where it's from. And technology is there to make that happen. So um, I say uh, that. Uh, I'm going to show uh, I think one of the first things that happens is that all the spotlight also goes on the talent. So for Lior and Leticia, what I want to know is that Lior, I know uh, you've done uh, like Hollywood projects, like these films that you were talking about. Uh, so did they happen because 
father became so huge, then you ended up having an agent in LA or something. Is that how it worked out for you? And and for you, Leticia, what kind of a, a sort of a openings or what kind of offers are you getting now since the show went global? So, um, yeah, because of the show, because it's become global and everybody's seeing it, specifically in the industry in Hollywood, people really appreciate that show and really loves it. Um, so yeah, I'm have, I have agents, I have managers there. I, I have my own, me and Avi, we have our own production company um, that based in Israel, but we're giving services to the US uh, and globally all over the world, actually not just in the US. And yes, I'm getting, I have a lot of options and, I, and I'm getting a lot of offers uh, from Hollywood now uh, to participate in, as an actor. So yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a great times and, and, and it's, it's, and you know, to become, to, to get this kind of success in my age, um, I, I, it's not that I'm like Leticia, 23 years old and I'm getting all that success. It's, uh, Stop it. we're the same age, so don't go there. <laughs> Lira and I are actually, I think everybody on this panel is the same age. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. No. <laughs> Leticia, she's 23 and I am. I'm older than her, and to, to, to get this kind of success in my age, uh, it's, it's, it's every morning I'm, 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 I'm looking to the sky and I say thank you very much for everything, and it's, every day is a surprise for me, and this is how I take it. And for you, Leticia, is it uh, that you're being approached first from India, and then from Hollywood? <laughs> I've been approached um, from the UK first, actually, a few years ago, and then the US, and, um, and then France, because French people are a bit slower, but when they love something, they really love it. So I'm getting now, now from France, uh, very, very nice recognition, and I'm getting offers and um, great directors are meeting me and they love Fauda and they, they are so impressed by the show. Uh, I think one thing that is common to everybody is that they are um, moved and, and I don't know, it's, it's something huge. When they talk about it, it's always like, oh my God, this show Fauda. <laughs> They're not recovering, you know, so it's really interesting and, and it's good to be in this position as an actress suddenly to talk about your work with someone. It's really enjoyable and um, and I'm waiting for um, t big TV series from in the States, so I'm waiting, but I had the chance to work this year with a, a huge director in the States as well. And so we never know. Now I'm just waiting. I was about to play in your honor, the French, you know, the French adaptation. Then no, oh, uh, right. but but new things are coming. So yeah, it's really great. Leo, there's a question for you uh, from Malvika. She wants to know that uh, would you consider co-producing or uh, partnering or directing on an Indian uh, or a foreign series, like more like a collaboration rather than just a remake? Is there something for that? Definitely, definitely. We are we are very open to collaborate, and we want to explore the world. We think now the world, the TV, TV can go everywhere, and it's not just uh, local; it's global. And and yeah, we I would love to uh, connect and and to try to co-produce with someone in India and and whatever wh wh wherever. Uh, yeah, definitely. Dior, there's an interesting backstory. I think uh, before Fauda and uh, just I think after you left the army. You are Arnold Schwarzenegger's bodyguard. Can you share something about that? Because that's very interesting. I just found that. Sorry, I had to Google. <laughs> so I'll tell you something. It sounds very interesting and sexy, but it was very boring for me. I was just released from the army. I did some crazy things in the army. And it was, I looked, I was there. It was like a, a guard dog, not doing anything. Most of the time I was at his house. I wasn't with him. I was with his family. Um, nothing to write home about. <laughs> nothing to write home about. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, Dana, uh, in terms of uh, coming back to the Yes Studios portfolio, uh, we just about to round off, so I just wanted to get a bigger picture from you. Uh, if you can just walk us through what kind of shows have already been adapted in India, number one, and what kind of shows does Yes produce in terms of what is the sort of uh, philosophy that Yes has in terms of the kind of content you 
uh, Beth? Uh, well, first of all, we're a local broadcaster, but with shows that obviously kind of, um, you know, do exceptionally well and have been really well received throughout the world. And we're part of a trend. I mean, Israeli production and Israeli uh, storytellers have been doing exceptionally well. There's so many great shows that have come out of this country and so many series that have either been shown in the original or in an adaptation. For us, um, Fauda's obviously going to production, you know, we're hoping uh, this year, Your Honor, we spoke about, there's another show called Swagim, which is also in development with applause. There are other shows we're having, some of our news slate that we're having conversations about right now. In the US, uh, we've had numerous shows picked up, everything from uh, The Good Cop, which is on Netflix, uh, 68 Whiskey, which I think is behind me, which was j just aired in <laughs> January in the US, obviously your honor in the US as well as in India and in France, there'll be an adaptation with Brian Cranston in the lead role um, doing that. And we had just had another show picked up called On the Spectrum by Amazon and they're gonna do um, an English language version of that as well. That's about three adults on the autistic spectrum sharing an apartment. It's a beautiful, beautiful show that we all love and are very, very proud of and that's done exceptionally well everywhere um, it's been shown. So there's a lot, but our philosophy is really, um, you know, to be open and to take risks and to take chances. We are a premium pay platform, a multi-channel platform. So our subscribers are paying us monthly, not per show, not by rating, not by advertising. So we, you know, they depend on us to make sure that they're constantly um, entertained and we have a lot of leeway to do that and we can take more chances I think than some of the other platforms and some of the, definitely some of the commercial channels um, because it's never going to be about that one show it's going to be, be about the entire portfolio and the channels and the services that we provide so I think that that's the one thing that really defines us is your uh, uh, would you uh, and Avi be sort of uh, involved in the Indian production in terms of just uh, having an overview of what's, what's going to happen. Like, would you like to come down for the shoot if possible, if, if the world is safe? And maybe even if you can have a cameo in the show, I don't know. <laughs> um, As an Israeli tourist, maybe, in India on a motorbike. First of all, I would, uh, I think I would, I would, I would come and I will come because um, I want to see how, how it goes and we want to be very involved. We want to know how it goes and, and we are right reading everything that they're giving us and we are part of that um, operation and creation and, and um, so yeah definitely I, I, I'm just waiting for the lockdown to, to come to, to get out and that just to come to India I'm missing India take me there Leo take me there I will I will I'm going I'm, I'm going to have a big, big motorcycle That's we it. could I'm learn Hindi you know we learned Arabic so no problem yeah <laughs> that would be some really good television I can guarantee you Okay, thank you very much, everybody. It's been a fantastic session. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for sharing everything. And we look forward to seeing, I wish we could do this in person, instead of in virtual reality. And I uh, hope we get to meet uh, one of these days. And uh, maybe, maybe we can all get together, you know, in India, in Mumbai for the launch. Oh, yeah, that, that has to happen. I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> Okay. Thank, thank you so you. much, panel. Thank you so much. Uh, it was a wonderful panel. Uh, people got to see the cast, the making behind this great series. Uh, we we got some great thoughts from all of y'all. I'm sure people in India are excited to see the Indian version of it as well. Uh, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. With that, we come to the end of this session. Our next session will start in about 10 minutes from now. Uh, the session, which is titled Animation Co-Production, A Strong Reality Post-COVID. We will be back in about 10 minutes. Please don't go anywhere. Wait for the last session. Thank you, panel.